Hi, I'm Paul Plus for Sprouted Gear Incorporated. And I like to say, have you seen the price of steaks lately? They just keep going up, and there's reasons why our proteins are going up more than other things. And uh, we're going to describe some of the details in this, in this video and why this could be a game changer in pricing our proteins. But first of all, I want you to realize some interesting facts um, about this. This is a very recent article. The U.S. inventory of cattle has, is the lowest that it's been in 64 years. It's been con continually declining for 64 years. Um, and this is a recent article, January 31st, 2025. It is a April 18th, 2025 today. So why is it inventory in the United States is going down and down when in, in the 1960s, uh, about one and a half to two million people in the country and now we're about 100 to 200 million people in the country and now we're at 350 million people in the country uh, so if the population is going way up and the inventory of cattle in the country is going way down something's wrong what is causing it well that's what i'm here to tell you about because i've been studying this for a while and why it relates to my new business the reason the population, the inventory of cattle keeps dropping, it has a lot to do with this land chart. So, you know, we know 71% of the world is covered with ocean, 29% of it is land, 71% of that 29% is habitable land, and 50% of the habitable land is agriculture. Believe it or not, us humans, the, our buildings, our infrastructure, our roads, roads, brid, bridges, cities, take up 1% of habitable land. So look at the ratio. We're 50 times more agriculture land than we have for people. And of that 50%, 77 to 80% of the land is used to raise livestock, just feeding our cattle, goats, sheep, chickens, pigs, 77% uh, of that goes to them. And where does our water and electricity go? Well, believe it or not, feeding cattle is in the top five uses of diesel fuel worldwide, it is in the top five uses of electricity in our country, and it uses by far the most amount of our water, and we have some serious water problems coming, I'm going to get more about that. And, and um, it is by far, you see, the biggest use of our habitable land. So interesting facts like that. Um, believe it or not, it's around 60% of all the country's water goes to feeding livestock. And um, th this is a way that we can change this. So uh, we've been feeding cows uh, the same way for thousands of years, but there's a new way to do it. Now, if you've heard about vertical farming, like you see behind me is an example of vertical farming, you might have heard it's a big disaster. Tens of billions of dollars have been lost to vertical farming for people food. But people food doesn't work because of the amount of electricity it uses. Believe it or not, on a ton per ton ratio, I can raise this fodder for at least 100 times less electricity than lettuce and strawberries, what they've been growing for people, 100 times less per ton if you compare on a per ton ratio. And so uh, my plan that I've been working on for a couple of years is how to do barley fodder production. This is a biscuit of what's called barley fodder. We refer to it as a biscuit. And uh, we can, this is a 10 day grow. Uh, we're probably going to grow it nine, nine or ten days with, with true hydroponics and producing this. And for the last couple of years, I've been redesigning and redesigning the system, trying different fertilizers. I've done hundreds of literal big and small experiments to increase the yield rate on a per square foot bit, uh, ratio. Uh, first five days of grow, we're growing 21 trays vertically, and then the final final four days or five days, we're going to grow seven 
rows vertically with the grow lighting. So this fodder greens up with only four days of LED lighting. And uh, I keep getting my ratios higher and higher. So this one here, I'll show you, we're, we're, hitting, we're hitting 19 to 20 pounds out of this at a 10 day grow. So you see what it is, it's all, all, all root mass getting thicker and thicker all the, all the time. Just to show you a better example, it helps, helps to look at it, look at it from a cross section. So you re really see just, just how thick and thick and now think about the, the calorie count you've seen. If you watch vertical farming for people food and they're growing lettuce, uh, there's very, very few cal calories per square foot. So this is, this is well under a square foot, and and we hit we're hitting three to three to three and a half inches of root, root mass. Now think about this: if you were a cow, would you rather eat dry dry uh, alfalfa, grass hay, or even worse, uh, corn silage, where you take corn stalks and you chop them up and ferment them in piles? and it looks like the mulch you put in your garden, or you like to eat fresh barley fodder that is living barley grass, and this is loaded with pro probiotics and enzymes. Now to give you a quick brief on the, on the numbers, uh, the new system I have, I have proposed in 250 square foot of space, we're, we're gonna, the new figures we're, we're coming up with, uh, uh, 594 pounds per system per day, 365 days a year. So we're hitting very close to 600 pounds out of every 250 square feet. We'd be doing large warehouses. And <clears throat> for example, I use a, a one acre size warehouse um, at a 40,000 square foot warehouse slightly under an acre, 43,560 square feet is an acre, uh, <clears throat> we would be able to pr produce 47 tons of barley fodder, 365 day days a year. That's, that's over, over uh, I think it was 19,000 tons per year in less than an acre of land. Alfalfa, this is, this is Bermuda, but alfalfa hay, the number one crop, uh, the average yield nationally is four tons per acre per year. So we got 19,000 tons per acre or four tons per acre. Believe it or not, that's, that's about a 4,000 to one ratio. So, uh, and, but then we still need a couple hundred acres of, of barley to produce the seed to grow in this. So the plan is we put these 40,000 foot buildings or bigger next to a feed yard where you right next to it, you have 100, 200, 300,000 cows, and we feed them daily barley fodder. And in an adjacent land, we use to grow the barley seed to produce for the building. So it eliminates almost all transportation cost. And if the farmer is growing that barley seed right next to his building that's next to his cows, um, there, there's many levels of transportation that don't happen. Like if you buy even a train car load of barley seed, if I buy a commercial purchase of, of a whole train car load of seed, I'm still about 10 times higher in cost than growing the seed next to the, next to the building. And the seed costs down to only three to four cents per pound. And we're, for a ton, we're talking about $5 um, of seed will cover a full ton of barley fodder and labor we have worked out to. It's between 12 and six, 15 seconds per tray handling time. And so that puts us to about uh, $15 in labor per ton produced. And so between the two, we're, we're as low as $20 a ton. It might be 25 to 30 a ton to produce the fodder. That's, that's four, four or five times less than alfalfa production. So the farmer that invests for one of these buildings would actually lower his feed cost and provide a healthier feed for his livestock at the same time. And the main thing is that we'd be, we'd be slashing 
the amount of land needed, 50% of agriculture, we'd bring it down to about 10% or less. Uh, and the amount of water and diesel fuel goes away because um, in, in the building, we use such a low amount of LED lighting, we can offset 100% of the grow lighting for the room with one third of the roof. And we need to climate control it with dehumidifiers and temperature control. Less than a third of the roof will cover all of the climate control. So at about two thirds of the roof covered in solar, we are producing feed that is near net zero in, in energy consumption and carbon output compared to a vast amount um, top five uses in diesel fuel and electricity for producing the feed for our livestock. So um, I think I about covered things. I, I hope you enjoyed this video. We have two longer videos that we have an AI voice doing them. I'd like you to watch those to get the bigger picture. They both run about 20 minutes long. So look for our other videos from Sprouting Gear and visit our Sprouting Gear website to get more details. Thank you. One more thing, that video you just watched, I shot yesterday. Last night I realized I didn't answer the primary question that I started with. Uh, why, why beef prices and other proteins are going up faster than other things. In fact, right now at Costco, uh, ribeye steak is over $18 a pound. And the way things are going, I predict that it could go up to $50 a pound in the next 10 years, uh, the way things are going. And um, what I, I realized last night, I started searching 1 a.m. searches on AI and stuff, that this quote that I gave you from this article, 64 years ago, the cattle population has been declining ever since. Actually, this is wrong information. Uh, U.S. cattle inventory peaked in 1970, 75, 50 years ago, and the population of cattle across the United States reached 132 million, and now today it's at 87 million, and that is a 33.9% decline in cattle inventory, and in the same 50 years, the United States population was 216 million, and today it is 336 million people. That's an increase of 56%. So if you've got the beef population declining by 33.9%, human population going up by 56%, that's, that's a huge discrepancy. But I'm going to give you a teaser. I'm not going to give you the answer right now because I have two other videos I want you to watch. I want you to search for my video that I published one month ago called, titled Our, Our Country's Water Crisis. And uh, a teaser, the answer has a lot to do with something called center pivot irrigation systems. Uh, that's a teaser. And about two weeks ago, we did a, another, uh, these are both uh, narrated videos, research videos that I did. Two weeks ago, we did another one, and the title of that one is, Can We Really Slash Our, car our, our Livestock Carbon Footprint by 90%? That's the title. So search for those two, and uh, I hope you'll find them as interesting as, as this one. And don't forget to give, give us a thumbs up, share our videos with your friends, and click on the subscribe button. We're making progress with some cattle ranches, um, but we're, we're hoping we're gonna build a big, large building soon. And if you subscribe, you can track our progress of getting a building completed and what happens when it's done. So thank you very much for consideration. Have a nice day.